Welcome everyone for another low-level in-depth tech video I wanted to make for quite a while. Namely, Intel and AMD need to significantly redesign and reinvent their x86 cores to be competitive with Apple's silicon. You've seen my previous videos. I uh, certainly personally also quite impressed. I said for a very long time x86 too complex and stuff. But another thing is memory bandwidth. So risk risk aside, what Apple Silicon does very well is memory bandwidth and certainly they give Apple, AMD and Nvidia a run for their money, especially when you compare energy efficiency. So what Apple does here with the M1, you have probably seen it before, is integrating the memory there directly onto the Apple Silicon substrate. And that gives you a phenomenal memory bandwidth, namely for the M1, I think it was 200, I think. And then with more uh, larger Max and Ultra or Pro Max and Ultra and stuff, um, with more memory channels, uh, whatever there, there were, eight or whatever memory, memory channels, up to 800 gigabyte per second memory bandwidth. That is, of course, total shared with GPU and AI accelerator. But nonetheless, especially you do not always use the GPU, think your know, epic thread ripping through your Linux distribution or other Xcode stuff so, or, or video editing. Often you are not using, uh, for example, the AI accelerator or you're using more GPU. Uh, it's of course ironic that 20 years integrated graphics shared memory was low end stuff, not only at Intel uh, chipsets and then even the SGA Octane, all the game consoles and stuff usually Previously, memory bandwidth was so limited 20, 10 years ago, even when AMD started, that's it's not even an AIM, uh, Apple, um, Apple invention. As I said, Intel shared memory, and then even SGAO2, and um, also Apple, of course, uh, AMD, of course, with their uh, Fusion 15 years ago, whenever that was, a, I think it was called Fusion, of, of fusing the AMD, the, the CPU and uh, GPU. But case in point, memory bandwidth was always limited for all this stuff, whether it's 20 years ago, Intel, uh, 10, 10 years ago, AMD. On the reason, the only reason, because Apple always portrays this here is the greatest invention since sliced bread, which of course always a little bit reality distorted. Unified memory as it is not as amazing. It is only amazing if you have enormous memory bandwidth. And that is where the Apple M1, M2, Apple Silicon shines, especially in this massive max and ultra configurations and i wanted to make this live stream for quite some month ago which is ironic that now lisa sue from amd kind of forced me to that because i wanted to say amd and intel need to have something similar to compete with apple of course they are not directly competing as apple has such a close ecosystem that enthusiasts like ourselves or other gamers and stuff or independent companies, right? You can't build a ISP, a supercomputer on Apple technology, obviously, because you only get minis and, and studios and stuff. But still to be competitive, right? If years goes and on and this Apple Silicon is right now, it's maybe twice as efficient, just random ballpark figure of mine. Um, in the future, it might be four or eight times as efficient, right? And this is where Intel and AMD need to adapt, obviously and reinvent that, right? And initially I wanted to say, obviously, because of, because what is the issue? The issue is with uh, so also real-world memory bandwidth, right? So here in on Antec, Apple M1 Mac CPU bandwidth and uh, somewhere like 100, whatever, in hundreds of, hundreds of megabytes. And on my Ryzen 1750X with, with only mem test, a mem test, a very unsophisticated mem benchmark, mem test 86 shows me something of 22 gigabyte. I think either something, whatever, might measure something of 60 gigabyte or, or 70, 80 if you're lucky or whatever. In, in even in Intel's fastest configuration or so, your mileage may vary. Still far off of this, right? And so the issue with that is um, memory channels, right? The so Apple, whatever, they don't clearly say here. I believe the Ultra might be eight memory channels, but also it's a little bit as usual comparing apples and oranges because these are less wide channels, I believe, compared to DDR5 channels. But the issue is you don't 
have so many pins, right? Of course, with Ryzen, you have two memory channels, um, and yet then you can only populate, like for max performance, only one DIMM per channel. If you use two DIMMs, then you have significant lower clocks. And this costs energy, right? This is exactly what Lisa Su presented here in the ISCC 2023 talk. Um, right now, what I wanted to get now. And so the problem is not only pins, because that is makes the whole stuff expensive, right? We have already thousands of pins there. And this is an SP5 socket here, so that is epic. And um, sure, you get more memory channels, right? But you can't, especially you can't have such a package in ultra thin laptop, not even a desktop, right? And sure, you can even have this in an epic thread ripping workstation or server, but it comes with a price, right? The If you compare this memory efficiency, right? If you compare Ryzen enthusiast desktop gaming with Apple Silicon, already Apple Silicon, sure, the maximum performance you still get at Intel and AMD, but at a much higher energy and total space cost in a case. But the energy efficiency comparing kind of the same performance is twice as efficient at Apple's side. If you go ultra enthusiast high performance gaming stuff, then the efficiency gap only widens to eight times the efficiency on the Apple side, right? And so not only is it cost for all the pins and sockets, right? There's a reason why this quad and eight channel boards are not only huge, but also expensive. And that is what I wanted to say for quite some months already. And what Lisa Su now presented, they did not say this will come to the consumer desktop. So I don't want to put your highest hope. The so talks of usual eff efficiency, like performance scaling, Moore's law and um, performance and efficiency and that. But this part here I find particularly interesting. Even tighter integration of compute and memory here with not only in current or last last gen and current gen X3D stacked cache, but the future might be DRAM layers, right? And so that is even more advanced than Intel. So what I wanted to basically say for quite a while, except I don't really have time for more YouTube videos, but AMD brings me to that now. I wanted to say Apple needs for their consumer platforms theoretically to stay competitive, also move to something like Apple's on-chip DRAM modules. But they even went one step further putting that here experimental for now and maybe supercomputer and, and so on uh, first on the silicon interposer of the AMD silicon here. And so that opens, so that, that is even more tightly integrated. That is of course not unheard of. AMD is already doing that with the three D stacked cache with SRAM. It's of course technolo technologically not that different to stack DRAM. But that's of course a crazy future, right? It's it's probably, in my opinion, that is certainly where they need to go. And um, it could even be, so if you are crying, but you want your socketed memory, which obviously I personally also prefer, I really hate, I said this in my previous Apple rant and skew selection tips and trick videos, I really hate soldered on memory, right? And because you can never upgrade this, right? You on the first day where even when you start your university, your small home office, your big business, in the beginning, you might not have that much money and you basically need to already purchase a highest SKU you might ever need, except sure, you can always sell it off and buy another one, but that's of course the flexibility of the personal computer DIY platform. But with this theoretically, um, now thinking about this, they could even in the future have DRAM layers think of a level 4 cache or even um, non-unified memory architecture, meaning so so either you could have be, be, um, and still offering optional optional and user swappable um, DRAM channels, right? So that you could have, for example, have an, an future Ryzen 8000 or 10,000 or whatever in like two years or three or whatever. And hopefully sooner than later and then your cpu could come with like 8 gigs or 16 gigs of 3d stacked dram layers already installed 
and, and, and crazy enough, maybe even at then, maybe even more stuff is 3D stacked. So maybe you have like four CCXs in the center and then on the top two 3D stacked SRAM cache for like some 256 or so megabyte of SRAM 3D cache and then maybe at the bottom circle of stuff like some 8 or 16 or 32 or whatever the case might be then of 3D. And they could still offer additional memory channels. Of course, then operating systems, I mean, they always need to adapt, right? There's always one more feature, one security mitigation, one virtualization technology, one transactional memory, some secure enclave, some crypto authority. There's always stuff that the operating system needs to adapt to. I mean, they don't need to. I mean, stuff would still run not optimized, but if you create such an architecture of high performance DRAM with optional, I'm speculating, right? I'm, I'm just giving my two cents and thoughts where the industry could be going. And I would certainly prefer that much more over this Apple Silicon where you cannot change. I mean, unless you lose Rossman and do micro soldering, but even, even this ultra thin chip soldering would not be something that you would DIY at home with your hot air station for the SRAM and stuff or DRAM. Um, of course, it, it could be that in at that time, we only get sold a DRAM and no optional memory channels. I'm only wanted to give my additional two cents that it would be totally possible to still have, like to have high performance stacked DRAM and another memory tier, level four, level five, whatever memory, either fully transparent or operating system managed kind of high management of non like similar what we have today non unified memory architecture with multi circuit systems especially in supercomputers so that the operating system could have for optimal performance and understanding what memory areas are local and which are further away and which have a higher latency and so that either transparently allocate or application visible allocate local and further away memory um, but yeah, that is where the industry is going. Um, really interesting stuff. I'm happy to see that AMD is obviously working on that. One other thing, so yeah, so just my additional sense. And clearly, as even I wanted to do this short out for quite some months already, clearly that is something that Intel and AMD need to urgently pursue to, to stay competitive. And other things, of course, the talk is long, the, the talk's usually um, relatively slow moving for me in such kind of business presentations. But the other thing is also what I could mention instantly, which is interesting, is processing in memory. And what that currently prototyping stage, apparently, allegedly, according to a presentation, apparently together with Samsung. And so what this offers is moving some compute elements straight directly into the memory. Of course, then your memory needs to support that to have this additional processing in memory. And what that could do, they, I think they didn't quite disclose any details. So I'm speculating now or giving my free YouTube two cents here what that could do. So obviously you cannot put full x86 like complex x86 cores all over the place. But you could, for example, do AI acceleration, right? So what they could do is some simple operations like multiply or multiply and accumulate um, common AI operations that you would do there on memory so that you, you place those memory cells so that your local, um, local memory nodes could perform this kind of some operations in there, of course, always in the name of computational performance and memory efficiency. You, of course, you can, all, I mean, you can today do all compute and memory, but as you obviously have seen and know that the efficiency and performance is vastly different. Doing that on a general purpose CPU, which can compute everything, but can be slightly slower or magnitude slower compared to graphic compute on hundreds if not thousands of compute units of applying the same operation, the same simple recurring operation on all of your graphic or other compute memory for 
graphic blending, 3D computations and AI acceleration. So that is certainly interesting, especially with combining that with all the other things ongoing. So as Lisa Su said here in the presentation, a very interesting time in the industry. People always think, yeah, in, in the beginning of all, all the silicon, it was the most interesting. But the, the complexity is, of course, overwhelming of where to compute, where to interconnect, not even to mention other presentations. They also talk about future optical, like in the name of efficiency, optical, optical communication. So the next complexity could then also be, although I, I think I hear this already for 10, if not 20 years. So the, the future is optical communications, like, yeah, 20 years later. Um, maybe, maybe not. But with all the other surrounding stuff in memory compute and, and 3D stack, SRAM and DRAM, the complexity and certainly fine manufacturing is endless. But of course she is right that the current developments are extremely exciting and interesting and inviting all the students to have work on there. So yeah, really interesting things. Um, it probably still takes some years. So the next year Ryzen will still have the same DDR5 memory channels. Although maybe soon they need to come with 3D stacked cache as standard to be competitive with Apple Silicon. They have up to 800 gigabyte memory bandwidth. Wanted to share this here, latest presentations from the ISSCC. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something. As always, leave in the comments below what you liked, disliked, learned, want to know more. Let's take a quick peek into the comments. Hopefully we can order them, basically use, the can use Gigabyte HBM SL4 cache. Yeah, I said cache or probably, um, the problem with cache is of course, the transparent stuff is usually more wasteful. So most, especially with, when we're not talking about small caches in terms of megabytes, it's like small, <coughs> 2023, small caches only 100, 40 years of megabyte, it's like 20 years ago that was your whole, more than your whole system memory. But of course still com small compared to gigabytes of memory. Um, but so most likely if you place their gigabytes of cache, I would expect it would make the most sense. If it probably works transparently for support of older, like booting older operating systems, but it would make the most sense if it's not cache transparently on CPU managed, but if the operating system has some control, um, especially because in the long term, it doesn't matter in the, in the short term if you can boot last year's Linux kernel or Windows XP on it. In the long term for such unified memory with different memory tiers, you want the operating system to know about this. So it would make sense for the future to vastly re-engineer as previously seen latest news kernel innovations of multi-generation last recently used and Marple tree algorithms having a huge performance improvement. So such kind of massively sized stacked memory tiers you want the operating system to know about, to be able to tune this in software and uh, potentially rewrite huge parts of the operating system kernel and libraries to make the most use of allocation strategy and uh, um, transparent or application managed migration and especially using this for um, shared memory for GPUs and AI servers. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something. As always, don't forget to share and subscribe and I hope you have a wonderful day or night and see you soon.